think we're about ready, Margaret. Great. The people who walk in darkness have seen, will see, a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge this nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery. You will lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. Mm. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms blood-stained by war will all be burned. Mm. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, his government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passion and the commitment mm. of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. In Advent, we have heard the call to keep watch. But what are we keeping watch over? Maybe we're looking for something that will define us, something that will remake us, transform us, some relationship, some hope, some love that will make us new. Maybe we're looking for the gift that we remember this night. I invite you to sing along with the verse from O Little Town of Bethlehem. Do, do. 
go out to sea in the muddle of our world is not necessarily the Christ child or even the light that shines within. Now, I, I think what we watch over is the world he came to save. The masses of humanity who think that they can find salvation in the stuff of this life, like we know we do sometimes. But we live in a world that needs to make room for a savior. And part of what we're keeping watch for is to see whether we can, we can make room, room for grace, room for joy, room for peace, even at our worst, at our most needy and most helpful and grace-filled. So tonight we light the candle, the Christ candle, as we rejoice in the light that shines in the darkness and declare his grace with joy and with love. I invite you to stand for and sing along Joy to the World. seated. And I welcome you here to this um, Christmas Eve service on uh, December 24, 2022. It's been three years since we have had a traditional Christmas Eve worship service here in this space. And if someone had said um, an early part of 2020 that would be the case, I wouldn't have believed them. But we celebrate tonight the fact that we have gathered together in this space and to celebrate this night of nights. It is a night where every heart prepares room for a newborn faith. Tonight a child is born to us as we welcome the faithful into a, this place of hope and peace and joy and love. And even though we gather every year on this night of music and candlelight, unless there's a global pandemic, we come to this space with a sense of sheer exuberance. We rejoice in the one who comes to save the world from the muddle of ourselves. So I invite you to stand as we join together singing, O come all ye faithful.
A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. At that time, the Roman emperor, Augustus, decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of David, or King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the radiance Excuse me, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born in, today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by his, this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. Mm -hmm. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. This has been the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I think anyone who has ever experienced Handel's Messiah knows quite well the prophecy of Isaiah set to song. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Alleluia. Isaiah's prophecy told of a source of light that would shine bright in a dark, muddled world. A light that could never be snuffed out by darkness. And so tonight we celebrate the coming of that light in the birth of Jesus. And I can't imagine ushering in a Christmas Eve service without those prophetic words of Isaiah. And it is with a sense of hope and sheer exuberance that we reserve the most heartwarming story of all in the Gospel of Luke. It's on this night of singing and candlelight that we wrap ourselves up in that old familiar story, like a warm shawl. There's something eternally comforting when we read those, that familiar story of Joseph and Mary finding no room in the inn, of shepherds watching over their flocks by night, and angels singing tidings of great joy. 
We sing the glorious songs of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. It's all there. This is the night that we feel good about church. Tonight, the muddled world of hopeless dreams and dark forebodings, they go away. And we experience Christ's church at its very best. And we, too, hurry with the shepherds to see the baby lying in the manger. And we respond in this sheer exuberance at a newborn baby who will grow to save the world. It'll be this little baby, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, who will break the yoke of people's slavery to sin, addiction, greed, self-centeredness, and will lift the heavy burdens from our shoulders. This is a story that reassures us over and over how all is well. We join to sing how grace is born upon the midnight clear, when stars shine and angels sing. And so let us bask in this stunning truth of God's love come down as we sing, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. Please stand as you're able. The word of the Lord, the book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people, and we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God, while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make his very own people totally committed to doing good deeds. Deserves a hymn. Would you please stand and sing, Hark! The herald angels sing. Joyful he nations 
Sometimes I marvel that my favorite Christmas hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, was written by Charles Wesley. It's only been in recent years that I've come to appreciate the way that Charles proclaims this theology of grace in that beloved hymn. Charles Wesley took John's description of John, the gospel writer's uh, description of the word of God and transformed it. He transformed it into a theology that proclaims joy in a muddled world. For Charles, the night when angels sing glory to the newborn king, peace on earth, mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. It's a hymn to reassure us that in a world of darkness, all is well. All is well. For the brokenhearted, there's a place to rest your pain. For the hopeless, there's a promise of joy. For the hungry, there is food and drink found in the kindness of others. For the oppressed, there is a call to work for justice. For the unbelievers, there is an eternal call to find purpose and a future with hope. Christmas Eve isn't just about the birth of Jesus' event. This is the night that ushers in a new age a new creation where our muddled world has a chance to reconcile itself with the spirit of true love. And this may sound a little bit like Pollyanna, but it's not. The Apostle Paul sent his disciple Titus into a muddled world to proclaim the promise that Jesus came to fulfill. He says, turn away from what contributes to the muddled world. Rather, look forward to a future when all will be well. Because the baby Jesus does grow up. And he brings with him this amazing gift of grace when we human beings figure out that no matter how muddled our world can be, God still gives us the greatest gift of all. Hope, peace, joy, and love. Gifts that embody the world that Jesus teaches us how to create. And yes, Christmas Eve is heartwarming and comforting and reassuring, but Christmas Eve should also challenge us. Christmas brings to our mind's eye a world made possible when it is ruled by grace and not greed. And so let us join together in word and deed to proclaim how the baby Jesus doesn't just address the muddled world, but reassures us all, all is well. Amen.
being a spirit of prayer. On this dark night, God of all possibilities, all is well. Yes. We are assured by this holy space and time, by our gathering together in the face of all that is not well, for a child is born, a child who will lead us more and more into your vision of wholeness for the world. And we are grateful. However, momentarily, our hearts lift with joy, our minds sense hope, mm -hmm. and our souls know your peace. Mm -hmm. All is well, mm -hmm. even when it's not. <laughs> so much is unwell in our world, God. And so we lift all the hurt to you, taking it off our shoulders. To you whose dream of wholeness is always at work. And we pray for all who hang heavy on our hearts. Mm. As a congregation, we give thanks for and pray for the wellness of the Lieb family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all who are ill, especially those with COVID. We pray for those who grieve, for those for whom this is a hard season. Mm -hmm. We pray for those who are dying and those who tend them. We pray for those in areas of insecurity and injustice, in war-torn places, and in the halls of power across the world. Mm -hmm. May leaders see the unwellness and bring justice. May all who in need find their wellness in you. And may it be through us where we can, as we are your hands and heart in the world. Let the work of Christmas begin in us this night, this holy night. Mm -hmm. On this dark night, this holiest of nights, help us sink into the holy darkness and hear something of your advent among us, mm. with us, around us, within us. Amen. Amen. Sorry. That's great. So without Kevin here, um, we won't be doing a holy night. And I know it's disappointing, but I do want to celebrate um, Chris Duran's mother, Olga. Yes, yes. <laughs> Who uh, insisted that Chris learn how to play the piano. So thank you, Chris, very much. We're going to um, prepare for our uh, circle of light during, uh, while we sing Silent Night this evening. And I would vi invite a few of the choir members to just come forward. And we're going to um, have people come forward and bring your offering. And then form a circle around. And then once we're kind of in place, um, we will um, whatever we do, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for those people online that probably now have nothing to look at, but there we go. And if you would light some. And then space yourself out a bit. You know, we're a little out of practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So come.
come as you are ready, take a candle, get a light, and circle the sanctuary. As we say. You know these words, right? Yeah. Together, the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Go in peace.